Hey y'all, this is Joe from St. Bernard Acres, sitting here in Wheeling, <laughs> thawing out finally, temperatures are getting up. Um, I went out Friday to uh, take care of Creamer and check on the place and make sure everything was still working and functional and everything was fine. Creamer was fine. Um, this is Tuesday, February 23rd. And um, I'll be going back out tomorrow. It's supposed to be 55 tomorrow. Um, and with the last couple of days of, of above freezing temperatures and a little bit of rain, I may be able to get up my driveway tomorrow. <laughs> Once again, I had to park on the street and walk up to the cabin. But uh, everything's good. So I got this idea for a video from a couple of people. Um, Liberty Creek Off Grid. Uh, Neil over there. Hopefully I will remember to put a link in the description to his channel. But if I don't, go check him out. Um, he's building a, a beautiful cabin um, up there in Vermont. And he'll be... Uh, doing all of his solar this summer, I think, this this coming year. Uh, but definitely go check out his channel. But he had asked me a question, and the other person that inspired me to do this video is my niece Tanya down in Texas, who is, you know, in the midst of setting up her, her solar system, you know, first time uh, dealing with solar. And the troubles <laughs> that she's gone through. It's all up and working now. She messaged me this morning. That she got up. Made a pot of coffee. Plugged in her freezer. And everything. You know it's like. Not needing a generator. She's totally off grid out in the desert in Texas. Uh, so this is going to be quite a blessing for her. Um, but. You know. Through messaging and texting and phone calls. She's been able to figure out how to get everything up and running. So they're, they're good now. But I wanted to do this video kind of explaining a couple things. And what is very difficult for people to understand are how to calculate watts. Both what you have and what you're using or what you need. Um, what's going on with the light? That's outside. It's a cloudy day. It's, clouds are going in and out. I'm sorry about that. So, <laughs> at least know I'm doing it for real. Um, I need a backdrop. That's what I got to get. Some kind of a backdrop. And then I can do lights and everything will stay the same, maybe. Um, or maybe you don't want too many lights. <laughs> it's better if it's dark and you don't have to look at me. But for Neil and Tanya, I'm doing this video. And anybody else that could use a, uh, uh, the way I figure it out. Now, the numbers I'm going to use are not exact numbers. Um, this may not be the engineer's way to figure it out. But it's very simple for me. And I hope it makes it simple for you. Um, I'm, I've got a few... Almost like slides I'm going to be putting in here to help me explain this um, as I go along. But we're going to figure out what you have available to you and what you're using and how you calculate that. That's what this is about, watts and watt hours. Um, everybody does amp hours. And for me, that was hard to figure out how many amp hours I'm using or how, you know, I, how to factor all that. It was easier to break it all down to watts. And um, I'm going to show you how I do that. The first slide, let me bring it up. I'm going to look at it on my screen while I'm talking about it. And then I'll add this. So to figure watts is really simple. Volts times amps equals watts. Always has, always will. We're going to break this down to how many watts I have available for my 
battery bank. So my battery bank, the way I have it configured, and I have other videos that show how you know my battery's wired. But what I have are six 12 volt batteries that have 115 amp hours in each battery. Six of those. So I have them wired three sets in series, three series, which I've done two batteries, two batteries, and two batteries. When you run them in series, the voltage increases, the amps stay the same. So I wind up with a 24 volt battery with 115 amp hours. The voltage increases, the amps stayed the same. I have three like that. Now you multiply those three because I run them in parallel. It's still 24 volts because in parallel the volts stay the same, the amps increase. I have three 24 volt, 115 amp hour set batteries that are running parallel. So now I have a 24 volt system, 345 amp hours. That's what we come to. With those figures, you can see on this, this slide here, I have 24 volts times 345 amp hours gives me 8,280 watts. 24 volts times 345 amps, 8,280 watts available. So that's where my battery set. 8,280 watts. Now, I don't want to use more than 30% of that because I don't want my batteries to go below 70%. Using only 30% of that, that means my available watts I have is 2,484 watts. That's all I have available before I need to start putting watts back in that battery bank. So that is to get me through the night and until morning when the sun comes up and I start producing electricity again and those watts start going back into my battery bank. That's how I'm looking at it. So how do you figure the watts you're going to use? Well, a 60 watt light bulb uses 60 watts of energy or electricity every hour it's on. That's the watts. That's a watt hour. How many watts does it go through in an hour? A 60 watt light bulb goes through 60 watts every hour. Um, if you run it for four hours, then you've depleted 240 watts out of your available battery bank night. So that's how you figure out whatever you're trying to run, you figure out the watts that that label says. It may say 115 volts, uh, 2.5 amps. So you take that 115 times 2.5, that tells you how many watts it's going to use every hour. Plain and simple. So, what do I use? What I, I made this as simple as I could. And this is going to be, everything is going to be based on a 12-hour night and a 12-hour day. To make it even more simple. Um, the only thing I'm trying to do here is make that light bulb click off in your head. <laughs> Hopefully it's an LED bulb, but... What, what I figure my cabin when I'm out there for the weekend, this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to run a couple of LED light bulbs. Um, they're very inexpensive. They're the 60 watt equivalent, but they only use about 7 or 8 watts being LED. If I run two of those for 4 hours at 15 watts, I'm going to use 60 watts for my lighting. That's for all night. My mini fridge 
is going to run all night. Now it uses, it's, I had to figure this out, it's 115 volts times 0.6 amps. So, you know, I break that down because it doesn't run an entire hour. It kicks on for about 10 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes and runs. Then it stops running. It may go an hour, hour and 15 minutes, 45 minutes. It all varies. But I tried to, to, you know, average it out. So I'm looking at, you know, 20 watts it would use per hour. You know, it would use 240 watts overnight. So I'll break it down like this. Um, my inverter uses 3 watts an hour just to run. Um, if I'm charging any of my phones, my laptop, you know, the, the tablet, whatever. That's only a few watts. Let's say I'm doing my phone and my tablet at the same time. You know, I'll figure in four hours of, of charging things. And I put in a modem for if I had like satellite internet. Those average around 30 watts. And it would have to run all night if I'm running security cameras. So, you know, you're looking at 360 watts there to run the 12 hours. So I will use during the night, on average, 716 watts if I went 12 hours with no light charging the solar panels and no more electricity coming into the battery. That's my basis. I'm going to work on 716 watts. That is obviously going to fluctuate, but I need... 716 every night. Not only do I need that 716 every night, I need that 716 watts the next day for 12 hours during the sun. Then I go without sun again. So I'm doing 12 hours a night, 12 hours a day, just to see if that clicks that light bulb off in your head. So that means during the day, I have to to generate 1500 watts of electricity to number one fill the battery bank back up number two run those appliances during the day now you know I won't be running light bulb obviously but the fridge will be running the inverter will be running the modem will be running you know those kind of things so you have to have enough solar panels and enough solar coming in to replenish the batteries and run those items every day so that when night comes no more uh, electricity being produced your batteries are full and you're good to go that's what you have to think about I hope that makes sense it's hard for me to say but You'll have to do this on your own. You know, every, every situation is unique to itself. I'm just telling you, this is the formula, if you want to call it, that I use to figure out what I can and can't do. Now, in Ohio, you know, every state's different as well, but in Ohio... A 100 watt solar panel in the springtime and in the fall will generate around 300 watts a day. It's never going to generate 100 watts an hour. You know, I mean, uh, to get 100 watts an hour out of a 100 watt solar panel, absolutely every piece of the equation has to be perfect. So, you don't plan on that. You know, the average 100-watt panel in Ohio, in my area, generates about 300 watts per day. Well, I have 1,000 watts of panels hooked up right now. So, you know, I should be able to generate 3,000 watts every day. Uh, in the summertime, I'm going to generate more because days are longer. I'm going to get more sun. Wintertime, I'm going to generate less because less sun. 
Now, those are the fall and spring averages. So you'll have to run your own averages. Keep track of everything so you learn exactly what's going on. Um, and each appliance, figure out how many hours you're going to run it and how many watts per hour that's going to use. That's how you know how big to make your battery bank and how big to make your solar array. Now, now if I'm making in my uh, thousand watt solar array, once I hit that seven, first 750 watts, my batteries are recharged now. The next 750 watts are going to run everything during the day. You know, so it, it, everything's going to be running but not coming off the batteries is what I mean. It's going to be coming off the solar panels during sunny days or a majority of it will. Now, if I wanted to hook up my other, uh, say, four more panels and, and have 2,000 watts, worth of solar panels then I'm going to fill those batteries up fast I'm going to a lot what I need to run during the day and I'm going to be producing a lot more electricity that during the day I could run my air conditioner I can run uh, power tools because I'm going to be generating tons of uh, solar with 2,000 watts and as long as the sun's out so you see uh, what, what I'm trying to I know I have a hard time explaining this all I'm trying to say is it's very easy to figure out you know you uh, the biggest question everybody has is how big a uh, battery bank am I going to need how big a solar system am I going to need well, this is an easy way to figure it out. In closing, I hope you're able to extrapolate something from this. I hope it wasn't a waste of your time. Um, I, you know, keep in mind, I'm not an electrician. I'm not a solar technician. I'm just a guy who figured out what I needed to run. And I'm just trying to share with you how I figured out what I needed. Um, that's all I'm doing here. I'm not giving you instructions. I'm not trying to say this is what you have to do. This is what I did. This is how I figured it out. And this is how I'm going to proceed in the future with figuring out my needs and whether or not I can fulfill those needs. That's all we're trying to do here. I certainly hope you appreciate it. I hope it does you some good. Because, um, you know, I appreciate you watching them. Um, if I miss something or you think of something I should have mentioned, by all means, leave comments. Uh, if you got a question, leave a comment. I look at my comments. I answer my comments as much as I can. And I appreciate all of them. And I appreciate all of you. Uh, if you're subscribed, thank you. I appreciate it. If you're not, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you can uh, see more of these videos. If, if you don't want to see anything else, you can see more of what I, I stumble my way through. Uh, and Neil and Tanya, I hope this helped you guys as well. Um, but remember, like it, share it, comment. Subscribe, ding the bell, blah, 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 blah. It supports the channel. It lets me buy more equipment that I need out there. And like I said, I'm getting ready to start on the barn now. So it's going to have its own smaller solar system. And I'll teach you about LED, 12-volt LED. But this is Joe sitting here in Wheeling, wishing I was out at St. Bernard Acres. I'm out.